All right. Hello, everybody. We have uh, today um, for the second time, we're very lucky to have a, a follow up with John White about M Wave for Hard Math. And um, let me introduce John. John uh, is the director of the Health Professionals Division for Hard Math, and he has been with the company since the beginning. Uh, he has worked with very well-known companies, training them like Hewlett-Packard, Boeing, uh, Nortel, Cisco, Adobe, and Sears. And he has also trained and supported athletes. And now he is dedicated to helping health professionals like all of us. So thanks again, John, for joining us. And um, I don't know if everybody knows me. I'm Patricia Rothstein. I'm a um, uh, certified EMDR clinician and CIT, and I'm a co-host in the EMDR learning community. And I'm a big, big fan of hard math. Um, let me tell you guys a one minute uh, thing that happened yesterday. I belong to a um, uh, uh, networking mm -hmm. of uh, professionals, uh, a group, and uh, we had our meeting yesterday. And most of them, they're not in the therapy profession. And most of them um, think like one of you mentioned that these kind of things are like woo-woo. And they had asked me to do a presentation on nervous system regulation. So I said, would you like me to tell you or would you like me to show you? And some of them were a little bit skeptical and they said, show us. So I um, taught them how to do the quick coherence technique and uh, they were so amazed and they were raving about it they could not believe the difference of how they felt before and after and I won the GOAT award for best presentation thanks to Hartman <laughs> so, just the, goat, wanted... the GOAT yeah. award awesome <laughs> it's it's been right. a very very useful addition to my practice so that being said um Let's take advantage of having John here. Very good. Thank you very much, Patricia. And it's a pleasure to be back uh, uh, presenting to your group. And, and we have a soft spot here at HeartMath in our hearts for EMDR. We have been working with the EMDR community now for over 20 years. We've been to a lot of EMDR conferences. We have a lot of EMDR clients. And over the years, we've had a lot of EMDR clients become great friends. So I have made some wonderful friends at EMDR. And some of the things that I will present today will be how a lot of our EMDR practitioners and a lot of our, our colleagues at EMDR have integrated heart math into their practice. And I'll share a little bit of that with you. Um, best I can. We're, I, I, I've got a very aggressive schedule. I want to share a lot with you and don't have as much time as I would like. But uh, we're going to do the best we can there. But a lot of the, the comments that, I'm, that, that I will share around EMDR came to me from the practitioners themselves. So I wanted you to know that before we get started. Um, and what I'll do, brief introduction to heart math, uh, give you some idea of who we are, what we do. Um, I will give you a brief introduction to our technology. And then I want to introduce you, um, as, Patri as Patricia has asked, to our M-Wave Pro software hardware program. And this has been a wonderful addition to HeartMath. I've had a lot of the same experience that Patricia had introducing it to people. They think, oh, I don't know about this. How do we know anything's happening? How do I know it's working? And in this way, they can actually see the activity of their heart rhythm, their autonomic nervous system and the interplay between sympathetic and parasympathetic, you can see that in real time using our technologies. So in this day and time, seeing is believing. And like I said, I've got, we've got uh, a special offer for you, um, some other things. And I want to leave at least a little bit of time at the end of this for questions and answers. So with all of that, let me get started. I'm going to move through this uh, as quickly as I can, and hopefully you'll have some questions at the end, and we'll have time for that. All right, here we go. 
Yes. Short introduction to heart math. And just a little bit of background. Again, I'm going to move through this as quickly as I can. We were launched in 1991, so we've been around for almost 35 years. Uh, we are known for developing our training programs where we present our tools, our techniques, our exercises, and we specialize in helping people self-regulate, self-manage, manage stress, manage their emotions to optimize their performance, their health, their overall well-being. We're also very well known for our research. We have now over 500 independent um, uh, articles and studies published in peer-reviewed medical and psychological journals documenting the effectiveness of the tools and the techniques and the technologies that we provide. And finally, we are known for our technology. We have uh, software programs that run on Mac and PC. We have uh, apps and sensors that run on Android and Apple you know, phones and tablets. And these things are designed to be training devices and educational tools for people. And we're a little different where, where, when it comes to heart rate variability. That's your heart rhythm. That's what your heart rhythm is called. We use that heart rhythm as a biofeedback signal in real time to help people learn how to self-regulate, to manage their emotions and to manage their stress. And our work has been published here, just a few of the peer-reviewed medical and psychological journals, the American Journal of Cardiology, the American College of Cardiology has published our work, Frontiers in Psychology, uh, and it goes on. There are quite a few more, but they're just some of the journals. And as I mentioned before, um, we specialize in creating our techniques to help people self-regulate, to manage stressful thoughts and feelings that come up and cause issues. And we look at this self-regulation as a critical skill, not just something nice to have or something that would be good to do, absolutely critical to navigate the, the incredible stress that today's times present to just about everyone. Um, so we think it's, uh, it's a critical skill, nervous system dysregulation, as you folks know, many people don't, significantly contributes to the vast majority of health conditions and mental health conditions that, uh, patient, uh, that uh, physicians uh, and mental health professionals are seeing in their, in their patient populations today. So a little bit about some of the results that we've generated. We use a normed and validated um, psychometric instrument prior to a lot of the training we deliver. Use it uh, 30, 60, 90 days after the training we deliver. And this psychometric instrument gives us an idea of the changes people have experienced as a result of the training, pre and post assessments. Uh, so these uh, uh, statistics that you're seeing here are coming from over 14,000 people that we've trained. We took various organizations, hospital systems, government organizations, uh, Fortune 500 companies, school systems, and pooled them all together. And as you can see, statistically significant improvements in emotional vitality and well-being, sleep quality, people's ability to calm themselves when they feel overstimulated or, or sympathetic dominant is one of the terms people use today. We all, we've also seen significant reductions in anxiety and depression, fatigue and anger uh, as a result of the trainings that we've delivered. And we've coined a phrase called coherence. And this is a term that describes an optimal state in which the heart, the brain, the nervous system, and the emotions start to synchronize and our human system starts to operate more efficiently and more effectively. And our tools and techniques are designed to help people create this state of coherence in their system. And this is what you actually see on our technology products. And you're gonna see it in a moment. I'll, I'll demonstrate it and show it to you in real time and you can see what, it, what a session looks like. But our research has documented, and now there's a lot of research in the public domain, not just ours, but that of others, documenting that as people are able to create this coherent state, even just for a few minutes at a time, a few times a day, throughout the day, that it, uh, they can reduce, significantly reduce anger, worry, anger, 
uh, anxiety, stress, starts to create nervous system regulation and stability, which once again, you can see that take place on the screen. Increased calm, increased mental clarity, better sleep, increased energy, all of these things result as uh, a, a byproduct almost of creating this coherent state, again, just a little bit each day. And it can be done in the moment to help people uh, process traumatic material, which is how a lot of the MDR professionals are using it. And some of the applications uh, where the EMDR practitioners have shared with us that they're using it is uh, establishing, helping the client, uh, the patient establish a safe place, somewhere they can go when the traumatic material becomes overwhelming for them, a move they can, an inner move that they can make that will help. So establishing a safe place, a lot of the practitioners have shared with us, it's wonderful because our techniques help people engage their senses, help people activate an emotional state, help people become more uh, self-aware. Their internal awareness increases. Uh, consistent practice starts to build an inner security. Uh, they can use the techniques and technologies during, before, during, and after an EMDR session to help the client ground and feel more centered. So here are some of the phases you know, of EMDR, uh, some of the protocols, which you all, of course, will recognize, some of the applications for how the heart math techniques and the technologies can facilitate an EMDR session. And I'll give you a moment just to kind of look from this. But again, this is what we have heard from a lot of the EMDR practitioners that we've worked with over the years. So one of the things I mentioned earlier that some of you have possibly heard of, some may not have, it's a term, a state called heart rate variability. And this is a really simple phenomenon. Medical science has known about it for many years. Pregnant women get monitored for heart rate variability, especially in the urban areas, about once every trimester. Heart rate variability is one of the best uh, um, tests they have for identifying problematic births. And so it's, it's well known in the, in the scientific and the medical communities, not so well known in the therapeutic communities. And it's a really simple phenomenon. It is the beat to beat variation in time between heartbeats. Simply said, our heart rate is constantly speeding up and slowing down, no matter what our level of activity. Your heart rate, my heart rate is speeding up and slowing down, even as we're just sitting here quiet and still and so forth, still speeding up and slowing down. And it, it, it provides a window into the autonomic nervous system. When the heart rate speeds up, sympathetic nervous system is dominant. When the heart rate slows down, the parasympathetic portion of the nervous system has taken over and is dominant, bringing the heart rate down. And lately, over the last 20 years or so, heart rate variability has been identified as a common denominator in all-cause mortality. It, it is not a diagnostic tool, but it, can, but it does correlate to various disease states, mental, emotional, and physical disease states. And because it's very sensitive to even subtle changes in emotional state, you can use it as a biofeedback signal to help train someone, train yourself how to self-regulate, how to manage those emotions. And you can see that effort show up okay, on, the screen of, on the screen of your computer. So, or your software. Uh, you, folks will need, you folks will need to mute if you can. There we go. Thanks very much. And this is just an example, this uh, uh, graph right here. Uh, is an example of a heart rate that's speeding up. You see less and less time elapsing between heartbeats. And when you plot it out on a graph, it plots out as a waveform. And this is uh, very similar to what you'll see on our technology in a moment. And here's what was interesting. This is what we kind of discovered and what we have made popular over the last 30 years is when individuals are dysregulated, when they are stressed out, 
when they're frustrated, angry, fearful, anxious, whatever those feelings might be, the heart rhythm or the heart rate variability pattern becomes choppy and erratic looking. And we call this, research now calls this an incoherent rhythm. And when that rhythm is extended over periods of time, when that rhythm becomes the norm or the default mode, as it is in so many people today, a lot of health problems start to accumulate over time, mental, emotional, and physical health problems, incoherent rhythm. On the other hand, when an individual practices with one of our techniques, and we're certainly not the only organization that teaches techniques that help people create coherence, we're one of them. And we know our techniques when people practice will help them start to create what research calls a coherent rhythm. And you can see how much smoother and more rhythmical the rhythm on the right is compared to the rhythm on the left. And what you're actually seeing here is the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems have become synchronized and they're now aligned. And it's a far more efficient, far healthier, uh, more regenerative state than of course the choppy erratic looking heart rhythm where the autonomic nervous system is dysregulated. So you can literally see regulation in real time on the screen of your smartphone, tablet, computer as a result of our software and apps. And the other interesting thing, and we're, we've been a pioneer in, in this science as well, is how these heart rhythms affect brain function. What we, what we know and what medical science has known for many years is the rhythm of the heart is sent at high amplitude up the vagus nerve, the spinal column, and it interfaces with the higher perceptual centers of the brain that you see here illustrated on the right. And it has a powerful influence over how the brain processes and perceives information. It has a powerful influence over the brain's ability to think critically, our ability to problem solve, discriminate appropriate behavior. These are the functions of the higher perceptual centers. And when that heart rhythm is incoherent, basically those higher perceptual centers become disrupted they become desynchronized, if you will. And it's why people often do stupid things when they're stressed out. And then we turn around, we've all had that experience before and look back on it and thought, what was I thinking? And basically the part of our brain that processes common sense, critical thinking and problem solving and so forth is unavailable to us when that rhythm becomes incoherent and discordant. When the rhythm is smooth and rhythmical, the opposite effect takes place. They call it cortical facilitation. The cortical regions of the brain are facilitated and we're able to think more clearly, problem solve more effectively, uh, discriminate appropriate behavior more effectively. All of the higher functions that make us human, that separate us from the animals, come online when that heart rhythm is coherent. So it has a powerful effect on people's perception better way of saying it. And just one of our techniques um, is called the quick coherence technique. We have a number of different techniques which we teach in training programs and so forth. And this is just one, but it's very basic. And it involves asking people to gently shift the focus of your attention to the area around your heart. Start to imagine your breath is flowing in and out of your heart as you begin to breathe just a little deeper and a little slower maybe than usual. Find an easy rhythm that's comfortable for you. And what we found is when people shift their attention, just start to gently focus their attention there. You can put your hand over your heart if that helps you focus your attention there. When people do that, the heart rhythms actually start to change just as a result of focusing the attention there. And we call that first step heart-focused breathing. It's basically just kind of shift to your heart and start to breathe a little deeper, a little slower than usual, and imagine the breath moving in and out of your chest in an easy going way as you inhale and exhale. Really simple. And what you'll see is it starts to bring the nervous system into synchronicity. You can literally see that in real time on our, on our sensors and, and, and software programs. What we, what we will then do is ask people to, to focus in the heart and breathe through the heart for about 30 to 60 seconds. 
until their body starts to adjust to it and adapt to it a little bit. And then we'll suggest continue to breathe through your heart as you are. And now start to remember a person, a place, something in your life that you love, that you appreciate, that you care about, and start to remember the feeling you have when you're with those people or in those special places or engaged in your favorite activity. Uh, we call this uh, making a sincere attempt to experience a regenerative feeling because those feelings, feelings of care or appreciation or just a general joy when you are in the mountains or the beach or at the forest or that feeling you have is highly regenerative. It changes hormonal output. It changes immune system strength. It changes blood sugar utilization. These are some of the some of the research studies that we've done documenting this. So very simple technique. Gently focus your attention in the area around your heart. Start to breathe as if you were breathing through your heart. Do that for a few seconds until you settle in and relax a little bit. Then start to remember people, places, things in your life that you love that you enjoy and remember that feeling and start to recreate it and bring it back as you continue to breathe deeply and slowly. Real simple technique. And what I'd like to do now is take you through the software and show you, and you'll start to see through the software, get ideas how practitioners are using it. And I know Patricia sees all of her clients virtually. And the software is not going to be very helpful for you if you see your clients virtually. We have apps and sensors that work very well in a virtual setting. But the software, you have to be face-to-face -face or person-to-person -person because what you'll do is you'll connect your client to the software and you'll be able to see their heart rhythm real time. And you'll be able to see how internally they're responding to whatever you're doing with them whether it's an EMDR protocol or a heart math technique, you'll be able to see their internal response. And heart rate variability gives the health professional a window into the patient's emotional state. So can be really helpful in that way. So I'm going to stop sharing here. And I'm going to go to the software screen and kind of take you through that. And then I'm going to do a, a live session on the software and let you see what it looks like in real time. So the software has got uh, great references throughout it. Over here on the left, you see education and resources there, and you can click on these things. There's an introduction to the software, and it will take you right through it, explain to you how it works, how you can use it. Uh, it's got audio guides built in with our tools, our techniques, all those kinds of things. These are audio programs here. It's got videos as well that you can access, but it's an educational program as well as reflecting heart rate variability, how to use the program, resources are built into it, the science is explained, videos of medical doctors that we've worked with talking about heart rate variability and its importance why it's important, techniques all built into the software. And then over here on the, on the right-hand side, activities. This is where you go to run a session, if you will. And I'm going to click there. There's the home page. We're going to come back to this in a moment. Uh, but it's got a series of games up here at the top. There's these little icons that you can click on, a series of games, visualizers, music, color, all of these kinds of things are designed to help people understand that you can learn to self-regulate. You can learn to manage your emotions. Uh, you can learn self-empowerment and it can be fun. It can be enjoyable. It can be pleasant. Uh, it can be soothing. It doesn't have to be a hard chore, something that's very difficult and challenging for people. That's some of the perception that's out there. So, you can, based on your coherence level, make a hot air balloon float, make a garden bloom and blossom. It's got an educational program built into it. If you have a client that, that's having difficulty, you know, creating a coherent rhythm, um, 
that's a wonderful little educational program that you can use in two or three minutes to facilitate the client and get them on the right track, help them, help them have a, a positive experience with it, feel empowered. So lots of different things here you can access. This particular program also has a series of autonomic nervous system assessments, if you will, and you can use these. I'll show you an example of a report that the software produces. Uh, there is no charge for this. You can have as many sessions as you like, run as many reports as you like. And it is a heart rate variability autonomic nervous system assessment that compares a patient to a database of age-related norms. So they can see their overall quality of heart rhythm compared to folks in their age group. So lots of lots of nice features here. I'm done there. There we go. Games. And every time you use the program, you can store the data. So the program allows you to keep client data and create a separate file for each client that you work with. And you can see I've got a lot of clients here. I've got a lot of uh, uh, conferences that I've been to where I've done demonstrations for people. All that sort of thing is there. And I even have my own file here. I'm going to open that up. And that's full of a lot of patients and clients as well. Because like I say, we used to travel and go to a lot of conferences. We're starting to do that more now. Um, but uh, COVID shut that down. But when we did go... I would just open it up and I would store a lot of client data in my own file. So you're going to see a lot of different things there. But bottom line is every time you use it, it will store the data into whatever file you create. So you can track your client's progress over time, demonstrate it to them, show it to them if that's helpful for you. And in many cases it is. So lots of different things uh, that you can access. This is a nice little feature right over here. I'm going over here to the right-hand side up in the upper right-hand corner. That little question mark, I'm going to click there. It's a different kind of help menu. It allows you to come in and search. So if you'd like to learn more about anything uh, relative to the heart math techniques or what you're seeing on the screen, you can go here. And for instance, I might want to learn more about coherence. So I'm going to type that in and search for it. And this is a library that's built into the software that allows you to hear all the references for coherence. Coherence over time, coherence in the guides. All the references of coherence are right there at your fingertips and you can kind of scroll through and pick, up, pick whichever one seems to make the most sense for you. But it allows you to search and learn in that way. So. What I want to do now is I'm going to show you how this actually works. And one of my favorite protocols, one of the protocols I use and have used for many years with people is a little three minute protocol. And I'm going to go down here to, let's see. All right. See here, I'm going to pick one. I'm looking for a specific, there it is. This one provides a really good illustration, I believe. Let's see. Hang on one moment. While you search for that, John, I wanted to share something that um, I've had okay. some clients. Yes. That, there it um, is. Okay, if you're ready, I'll keep that for them for later. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for that, Patricia. I uh, appreciate that. But yeah, one of the things that the software allows you to do is to replay a session. So this was a session, and I chose this one specifically so you could see. Uh, the result of this three-minute protocol that I like to do with clients, especially if I work with them, working with them for the first time, I'll tell them 
that, you know, Mr. Client or Mrs. Client, whoever I'm working with, and I'm not a health professional, by the way, but I have trained lots of people over the last 30 years, and I've done a lot of coaching, and I've worked with athletes and executives and, and all that sort of thing. So to introduce this in a lot of cases, I'll tell them um, some of the issues that you're experiencing, Mr. Client, are stress-related. And if you can learn to self-regulate, self-manage some of those stressful feelings that come up from you from time to come up for you from time to time, your overall health will improve and some of the symptoms that you're suffering with will subside. So I want to teach you a really simple technique. And I'm going to show you how it works in your human system. And this is going to be a three-minute exercise. So bear with me for three minutes. I'm going to ask you to, to do this with me for three minutes. I'm going to do it with you. But here's how it's going to go. We're going to start this software up. And this software will show you your heart rhythm, your heart rate variability pattern. And please do not be alarmed by anything that you see on the screen. This is not a medical diagnostic device. We're not going to see any health problems or anything like that. It's designed to show you how your system works and how your thoughts and feelings impact your system. So we're going to demonstrate that. So here's how this is going to go. I'm going to ask you, if you will, I'm going to start the program up. Your heart rhythm is going to emanate from the left-hand side of the screen. You're going to see it. And all I want you to do is observe. Just kind of sit back in your chair and just notice it. Most people don't realize their heart rhythm speeds up and slows down all the time. And you're going to see that happening in real time. We're going to do that for 60 seconds for one minute. And at the end of that 60 seconds, I'm going to ask you to just gently shift the focus of your attention to the area around your heart. And start to breathe just a little deeper, a little slower maybe than you're used to, but comfortably so. And breathe as if you were breathing through your heart. Just kind of imagine the breath moving into the center of your chest as you inhale, out through the center of your chest as you exhale. That's all there is to it. And just relax and be comfortable and find an easy rhythm, a little deeper, a little slower than maybe usual. We're going to do that for the next 60 seconds. And at the end of that 60-second period of time, I'm going to suggest that you continue to breathe through your heart like you're doing a little deeper, a little slower than usual, and now start to remember a person, a place, an accomplishment, something in your life that you love, something you appreciate, something you enjoy, and start to remember how you feel when you're with that person or in one of your favorite places or engaged in one of your favorite activities. Remember that feeling and start to recreate it as you continue to breathe as if through your heart. Got it? Don't worry, I'll walk you through it and I'm going to do it with you. Let's get started. That's the way I introduce it to people. And here's what the software allows me to do. I can come up here and I can rerun this session. So this is what this one minute session looks like in real time. Down here at the bottom, what you're seeing is the pulse wave. And as soon as you start it up, it will tell you whether the little ear sensor, which is what you clip onto your ear lobe, that's how you connect the software program to the client. That's the pulse wave. And that is telling me that I've got a good contact on this ear sensor that's re relaying my pulse back to the software and the software is interpreting it as heart rate variability. As long as I see that pulse wave smooth and rhythmical, I know I've got a good signal. If that pulse wave breaks and starts to wiggle around and look kind of funny, then I know I've got to readjust that sensor. It's not making a good contact. So what you're seeing here is this individual observing their heart rhythm in real time, not doing anything. No exercise, no nothing. They're simply observing. And those red marks you see the individual might have wiggled a little bit in the chair, might have coughed, might have sneezed. It's an artifact, and the system will pick that up. It's not a problem with the heart. So right here, the timeline right here across the horizontal axis, at the one-minute mark, 
I've suggested to the individual, now if you will, just gently shift the focus of your attention to the area around your heart. Start to breathe as if you were breathing through your heart. And he's starting to do that right now. And what you are seeing is the heart rhythm is now starting to smooth out significantly. This is the seeing is believing part. This is where people tend to go, oh my gosh. My thoughts and feelings really do matter. My thoughts and feelings are affecting my heart all the time. And right there at the two minute mark, I'm suggesting now start to remember that person, that place, something in your life that you love, care about. Maybe it's the mountains or the beach or the forest or wherever you go to get away from it all and have that feeling where you're connected to something bigger than yourself, maybe, whatever it might be. So now they're starting to connect with what I just call that warm-hearted feeling. Hello, this is Michelle. And you can start to see the heart rhythm smooth out okay. even more, starting to resemble that John, can you unmute yourself? I just muted everyone again. There we go. Very good. So I wanted you guys to see what this three-minute protocol looks like because one of the goals when I work with a client, one of my goals is I want that client to, see, to be successful. I want them to see that, yes, their heart, rhythms are affected by their thoughts and feelings and it's much easier to control it can be a soothing experience very often when i ask people what was it that came up for you what did you focus on when i suggested a person a place something in your life they'll tell me about a loved one that they care about they'll tell me about uh, a trip to the beach that they took recently or the mountains or something like that uh, they might tell me about an accomplishment that they had where they were successful um, and that feeling it's obvious they can connect to that feeling because here you see the first minute there's the second minute with just the breathing and as they add that emotional component to it the feeling the heart rhythm smooths out and becomes nice and smooth and rhythmical and the impact this has on people is wonderful to see it has been for me people start to realize I thought my life was out of control. I thought my health was out of control. And now I see I can control my heart rhythm. If I can control my heart rhythm, I wonder what else I can control. I wonder if I can control that racing mind that prevents me from falling asleep at night. I wonder if I can control those panic attacks that grip me from time to time. And I, I just feel totally overtaken by them, helpless. I wonder if I can control that too. And indeed they can. They really can much more easily than perhaps they've been led to believe. So this is the seeing is believing part. Uh, thank you for bearing with me <laughs> with that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And there are a lot more features and functions to, to the software program, but that's just a little, an overview, I guess, if you will. And I'm going to stop sharing now and go back to the slide presentation, there we go. There we go. And these are just some of the comments from the EMDR practitioners. Obviously, you know, I'm not gonna read them to you and I realize this is a terrible slide. You don't put this many words on one slide that overwhelms people. And at the same time, it does, some of these comments do reflect how EMDR practitioners are using it in their practice, at what stages and what phases uh, they're starting to use just the quick coherence technique and or the technology. And there are other techniques that, that they've been able to use and employ um, in their EMDR therapy work. And a few more. 
So last but not least, and I want to save a little bit of time uh, for questions and answers. Uh, we do have a special offer, you know, for you folks. Uh, this is thanks to Patricia. She wanted to, to make this happen. Um, so you get a 10% discount and free shipping on all of our products, if you wish. You can go to the link, and I'm going to leave this up here a little bit, uh, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, and then BIT dot LY forward slash 3V, capital BV3UT. Click on that link. It will take you to a page on our website where you can see training, products, BMWay Pro, like I've described, all of it. And if you want to buy anything, you're certainly welcome to. Enter the coupon code EMDR10, and you'll get a 10% discount and free shipping on virtually every product we have. So thank you very much. Sorry, John. I'm going to post the link uh, when I post the recording uh, so that it's easy to find. Great. Make it easy to find. Yeah, this is a little, little might be a little troublesome for some people to write down, but you know, it's up there just in case. That's great, Patricia. Very good. And thank you very much. It's all it's a pleasure, you know, for me to be here today. I appreciate you showing up and being interested in this. And if you have any questions, you are welcome to contact me. Uh, J White at heartmath.com. That's my email address. I'll be glad to respond to you. Anything I can do to help you, I'm, I'm glad to do so. So at this point, I think we'll turn it back over to you, Patricia. And if there are any questions, answers, we've got another about 15 minutes. So, um, John, I wanted to, to make a comment about any, something that uh, happened that's um, in my, my experience. Um, sure. Maybe we can uh, uh, remove the screen share so that we have the whole group back. Um, there we go. So um, I I find that some clients uh, have difficulty, especially complex clients. They have difficulty thinking of a person or a place or something that brings um, a renewing feeling of gratitude right. or love or something like that. So I find that if you ask them to focus on something very simple like the taste or how they feel with the first sip of coffee in the morning. Yeah. Um, very simple things like that, they also work and they have an effect that they can see. Um, or the feeling of the warm shower when they get yeah. back home. Um, that kind of thing uh, that has to do with sensations is very useful and they can see it. Very good. I, I very much appreciate you bringing that up, Patricia. And all of you folks know that there is no such thing as a cookie cutter approach to trauma. Everybody's different. And you, your, your skill and your experience as a therapist, this is where it comes into play. And some people are able to connect with that warm hearted feeling quickly and easily. Others, it takes a little longer. Some can't do it at all at first and need interim steps. And that's where, again, your skill and your experience will come in. So thanks for that. Yeah, a lot of times just the simple little things. And one of the things I've found too, people can start out with something simple and small. And once they get in touch with that sensation, other sensations start to show up for them almost magically. You can't tell where they came from, but they start to remember some of those things and they start to come back to them naturally. So now they're on the way, on the way to self-discovery. Yeah, yeah. So, and another thing so. um, that uh, it, it connects, it kind of is very natural to blend this with um, parts work or um, IFS um, because what happens is that when they get to that state and when they see the regulation, they are connecting to self. Uh, so it's, and there's other techniques other than the, um, the quick coherence, like the heart soak, one of my favorite, that can yes. be used as an interweave, even in phase four, 
uh, to help them connect with that big S self and, and see and get a different perspective. So anyway, so I'll shut up so people can ask questions because I get excited. <laughs> Great comments though. Great comments though. I, I have a couple of comments, uh, Patricia. Um, first of all, I think that in phase two, when we're doing, we're starting with the, you know, the calm place, for example, um, the M-Wave Pro, I have the M-Wave Pro Plus, it really provides rationale for people. Why would, why should I do that? Like a lot of people have this, you know, these questions of why should I do that? Like what, what is the benefit of me sitting here and thinking about myself on vacation in Hawaii or whatever it is that they're calm place. And for, I don't know, maybe it's just me and the, the people that I work with, but I work with a lot of guys and they're very left brain and rational and engineers and computer programmers and they're, and, and once they see something concrete, they see how their heart rate variability or their heart coherence changes as a result of doing the exercise, it makes sense for them. So that's my first comment. My second yeah. comment is, and this is something I have not done, but I have some colleagues who've done that, is that once you get this one of these devices, if you're kind of like, I don't know, if you're low on caseload, um, you can do, you know, first meeting, you can provide, um, John showed very briefly the, the tools, the assessment tools. So you can, you know, you can offer like a free uh, heart, heart rate variability assessment and people are really attracted to this. I have some colleagues who were, you know, low on clients and then they, you know, they posted on whatever psychology today or wherever uh, that first meeting they provide heart rate variability assessment and uh, it got really good response. Um, so, yeah. Great. Good it's, to know. Where did you say that was posted? Wrote them just online somewhere? Oh, so or? yeah, Psychology Today is where, um, yes. it, it's a, the go. biggest directory for therapists. That's where a lot of people find their therapists. So, uh, you know, you can always update the profile. So if people use this tool, um, I also wanted to ask, there was a, a question in a chat, John, about the uh, the resources. So someone got the the heart the the M wave a few years ago, and the software keeps getting updates. I know that uh, because I yeah. I have the software. So you know, if I don't open it a couple of months, then I'll open it and it has update all update. Can you speak about the updates a little bit, John? Yes, I can, uh, and and that's that's great, Rotom. I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't cover that, in, you know, when I went over the software, but yeah, up in the upper left hand corner, when the software is on your computer uh, screen, and by the way, it runs on Mac and PC, and on the Mac, it'll illustrate just a little bit differently. So, um, I have a PC, and I'll have to describe how it looks there. But you can go up to um, there's about six keywords up at the top: file, edit, view, run, and help. Uh, you can click on the help up there. A drop down box comes down and it says check for updates. Real simple. Click on check for updates. It'll let you know uh, if there is an update available that you don't have and it will download that update automatically. And our updates literally take seconds. It's not like it updates for, you know, 30 minutes or so and you lose the use of your computer. It doesn't happen that way. It updates very, very quickly. But a lot of times the updates will be in the sensitivity of the program, the accuracy of the program. Sometimes we'll add a feature. Uh, a lot of times it will be plugging uh, bugs and things like that that the, the, the ordinary user may not even know about. So the updates are great, you know, just to, to your point, uh, Rotom, every so often, open up your software, go up there and check for updates. It's all free. The downloads are free and it, it will improve the quality of your program. So does that answer your question? Is that very good? Great question. Thank we you. We have another question from Debbie. How does this work with POTS, this autonomia? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, chronic yes. pain or illness. Can the physical symptoms make it difficult or impossible to alter the heart rate? Uh, it works very well uh, with POTS. 
We've had quite a bit of experience. We've got a number of case studies from POTS patients who have told us it helps them ma better manage that condition. Um, and one of the things too, as people practice with the heart math techniques, there is a carryover effect. There is a, 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 a cumulative effect, if you will. The human system starts to adapt to that coherent rhythm relatively quickly. And some issues like POTS can be mitigated. If not, you know, I, I, I will never tell someone, oh, yes, if you use our tools, your, your, your problems and your symptoms will just go away and disappear. That's not true. It has happened. But it's not true for everyone. So we've got a, a, a lot of experience with POTS and um, it can be very helpful. And it always depends on the consistency and the sincerity of their practice. And to your point, Patricia, you can see some of these heart conditions. Uh, POTS is one. Uh, there are others, arrhythmias, irregular heartbeats. You can see those show up in, uh, uh, in the software and in the apps. So you can see it show up in, in the, uh, the rhythms. Doesn't mean that the system isn't useful and valuable. Uh, so I've seen people with heart conditions literally practice watching their heart rhythms on the screen and they can literally see their arrhythmia diminish the longer they stay with the process. And it inspires people tremendously to see that. You know, I had a I had a, an arrhythmia when I started. Five minutes later, now it's almost gone. Not something they would expect. Not something I would ever promise either. But it's fun to have them have their own experience and go, wow, this is awesome. Now I want to practice these techniques more. And that's what you really want out of your patients and clients. Good. We have a few questions uh, in the chat. I guess uh, people that joined after you went through the difference between M-Wave and the app. Um, and they are asking about using M-Wave remotely. Um, so no, M-Wave is for, using in, for use in person. And if you're working remotely like I do, you use the app and the client has their own sensor. And yes. uh, you can still do it as you are working in the session via Zoom or whatever um, platform you use, but the client will be seeing the results in their app. Yes, that's Which correct. Looks that's like exactly. a big difference, but they still can see the three colors uh, when it goes, when they are uh, very coherent, so-so or incoherent. Yes, that's exactly right. If your patient has uh, uh, the, the, the sensor and the app on their phone or their tablet, it makes it very easy to work with them virtually. So, yes. Awesome. So, um, and Kathleen, the software he's talking about this inner balance. Uh, no, the software that we saw, the, the demo, is the M Wave. That's correct. It's called the M Wave. Pro, and then we have a, a another. This is what Rotom was referring to earlier: the M Wave Pro Plus hardware software program. And the link that you provided, Patricia, thank you so much for that. You click on that link, it will take you to a page on our website where you can learn more about uh, the M Wave Pro, M Wave Pro Plus, the Inner Balance sensors and apps. You can learn all that on that page. So use that link that Patricia will provide. Okay, we still have three more minutes. Any other question, guys? Yeah. I have one more comment. There were questions about the how to work with it online uh, with with the M wave specifically. So while you can't measure, well, you can't connect it obviously to your client's earlobe when you work online. What I do sometimes is I, I connect it to mine and I show them and I explain what I'm doing. I usually, what I do, I, I say, let just look what happens. Look at a screen for three minutes. I also do it for three minutes. I do it a little a slightly differently than what John is doing. 
I do first minute, I tell them to just baseline, think about what you were thinking before a session. Yeah. Then think about something like your mother-in-law or something, just, you know, <laughs> something that activates you. And then I, you know, and then I, and then I do my, you know, I think about something calming and then I tell them what I was thinking and 99% out of a hundred it's correlated. You really see the, how it yeah. changes uh, really quickly as a result with what you're focusing on. So I, I tell them, I just explain to them. And so for some people it's, it's good enough. I mean, I think it's, always better when it's connected to the person they can see how their physiology is changing but it's also helping for people to see um you know that it works very good very good you certainly can use it in that in that way and and just one quick comment there Rotem. um have you discovered the um coherence coach yeah, I yeah, I've been I've been trying the the you know all the application or it's not application it's the the games it's called part of the the games right it's yes. in the games category. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, very good. That's excellent. A lot of times you can use this is what I what Patricia and I were talking about before we before we started today is the coherence coach does have that little ball that can help people start to at least regulate their breathing. A lot of people, especially people severely traumatized, that's uncomfortable for them. And just starting out regulating their breathing might be a little baby step in the right direction, depending on your client. We've, I've had you know, trauma experts share that with me, saying this can be really helpful and really soothing for the client just to do that. Just breathe with the ball. And if it's too fast, I can slow it down for you. Let me know. If it's too slow, I can speed it up for you. Let me know. And you can do that right on the spot. And it can, it can at least help your client get off on the right foot. So yeah. To speak. So oh. that's another another application. You can do that online as well. Yeah. But, I I have one little suggestion, John. Um, I yeah. know that you know my M wave comes with a regular the old school USB. And I'm I'm a Mac user, and Macs don't have regular USB anymore. It's all USB C. So maybe that's something that will next generation will come with, or people will will be able to choose if it comes. And I have a converter, so I have USB C to regular USB. But I yes. think it would be nice if it just connects directly to USB C. Very good. Very good. Yeah, one of the things we're working on now, and this will be available, um, they say in in a few months, I will be very happy if it's available before the end of the year, because I know mm -hmm. how these technology, <laughs> know how the tracks go. It usually takes a little longer than your IP team is telling you it will. Yeah. Learned that over the years. But yeah. our, new, our new sensor, the Inner Balance Coherence Plus, that's this new sensor. Looks like this. You clip it onto your earlobe. It's Bluetooth. It's a Bluetooth transmitter. It will work with our software. That oh. sensor. That sensor is being in the software. That'll be one of the updates, probably. You know, you asked about updates earlier. One of these nice. days, you're gonna you're gonna open it. And it's gonna pop up saying updates are available. Would you like to update? You click yes. It'll download, and your software will then be Bluetooth activated. So you'll be able to use a Bluetooth sensor, no wire at all. And they're working on that. That's that's one of the top priorities on their roadmap. So should be available in a few months. And that would solve the problem, you know, because we're, we're, we're well aware of Apple changing its ports yeah. frequently. <laughs> Both Rotom and I gave you our wish list today. Yeah, yeah. very good. No, you're right in tune. We're right into you. <laughs> so um, right. we've run out of time, and I want to thank you, uh, John, for being so generous with your time. Um, and I hope that everybody got a, a good picture of what this can do and uh, how we can incorporate it in our practice. And uh, if there's uh, any other questions, um, when I post the, the recording, please feel free to post any further questions there and I'll make sure to get them to John if you didn't have a chance to get his email address and um, 
So thank you, thank you, and good weekend to everyone. Thank you. What a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Hopefully you. we'll do it again sometime. All right. Bye-bye. Stop the recording.